It's time to tank these walls. All the joints are taped up with this reinforcing tape. And then I put on two coats of tanking paint. The tanking that I've used here is um, a tanking paint, which might work in a very solid environment like a house, but I just don't have the confidence in it. So I've bought another product, which is an even thicker outdoor tanking, and I'm going to put that over this tanking. Ooh, this stuff's blue. I end up putting three coats of this particular tanking paint, making the total five coats. The copper has to go on after this. Slightly different issue at the moment. I have a pile of scrap wood I need to get rid of. More piles of scrap wood I need to get rid of. Wood that I need to use and all of that needs to be tidied up because it is causing me heartache. Normally all of this would be put into a shed, but I don't have one anymore. So the only solution I've left for the scrap is my little dinghy, and then I can stick the engine on and get rid of it somewhere. I haven't figured out where. Um, but my transom is gone a bit funny, so I have to replace it. This is a very rough approximation of what I need. I'm now going to take it and a little pen and I'm going to finally draw it out. Beautiful stainless steel bolts, um, but there was a piece of wood and you can see, you can see the remains of it. Okay, it doesn't quite fit. Be quick. Oh, no. We're sinking. This is butyl tape, and we're going to use this as a gasket to stop those leaks. Butyl tape is so sticky, it can be applied in the wet to a degree. I think I better bail out the boat. Right, let's get this scrap wood into the blue boat. My copper is underneath that big sheet of plywood. Let's go get it. than I remember. Originally I thought about putting one big sheet up against the wall and gluing it in there, but that's not an efficient way to use the copper. You can see there's a seam here, so that seam would be visible. And there's another seam here, and then you've got the holes. So I realized that if I do it in a brick formation, I actually use the copper more efficiently.
what I'm doing here is this is the first layer and then the next layer goes on over. The best way to think of this is uh, roofing. Um, but I'm going to now glue these in. Uh, but first I need to take this off. All good. I'm using this product because it bonds everything. It says all metals on the label, but I did check their website and it specifically says it will bond copper. Um, I don't know the reason why some sealants or grab adhesives don't bond copper, but there seems to be some sort of thing about copper that uh, you have to be careful with. So now this is waterproof. Any water that goes along here, through here, past there, in, is now entirely sealed and is waterproof. In fact, the weakest point is probably that seal there. As I install the copper, I'm going to be doing it like roofing, so it in itself will be waterproof as well. So there's two barriers to prevent water getting out, the copper and the tanking. So as long as I don't whilst installing the copper pierce it, then it's waterproof. So this panel is obviously one piece, but made to look like it's lots of pieces held together. I think we're over halfway. It has taken me days. It's taken me about a week already just to do that much. Now I'm getting good at it. I can get two rows in a day. And if I have to work, I'm gonna come in the afternoon and I'll get one row done. Um, but it is becoming quicker. Um, but the problem is, is everything has to be cut, everything has to be shaped, and everything has to make sure you fit in. I haven't had this problem where I haven't been able to get the lime scale off. So I think what's gonna make it a lot easier if I cut my sheets of copper and they'll be much smaller, easier to bend, and then all that stuff will fall off. I'm folding over the copper anywhere it's going to be exposed to skin, for obvious reasons. Okay, pinch it. Bend it over on the line. Do the same on that side. 
make sure it's at a right angle, fold it right in until it meets and just make sure it stays like that. And push. Done. Now we have a line here. Use my pliers. Once I've clamped it, pull this over. Pitch here. Measure on. Make sure it isn't. Changing shape, so on the level. Yep, nice and level. Continue patching. Check the level. All good. And repeat. And this is why it takes hours and 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 hours. Did I mention it takes hours? I've discovered a little problem, but it's fine because of the nature of the way I do this. Um, this isn't long enough, so it doesn't make it to the end, but that's okay. We've got a last bit to do, and I have a new copper tank. Ooh. Everything set up, we need to put the diesel generator on and we need to give it max power because between the compressor and the uh, plasma torch, uh, we need a lot of power. <laughs> I don't know what was going through that water tank that made it go black. Usually it's lime scale and green. When these tanks were manufactured, they were lacquered on the outside. 
Um, and that's why when you look at copper tanks, they look copperish, but they're lacquered. Um, so I put all of these up and all the lacquer is still attached. But they're all different color and different shades and all look a bit weird. I'm putting on paint stripper and you can see here where it's the lacquer is starting to come away. My initial plan is just to polish up all the copper and let it go natural and just see how that looks. And if it doesn't work out or I don't like it, I can polish it up again and uh, lacquer it. Finally, the last bit of copper is glued in. What you're now looking at is 43 tubes of PGB coming in at about 600 pounds. Over the years, I bought um, these um, from eBay. These guys came without the little cap. Uh, this came and uh oh yeah it had no the bit here at the end which is what you attach it to the wall was missing this came along but this handle where you are this handle rotates a lot and i don't think it's meant to do that so i bought a new one this one's much simpler handle there that there um but to attach it you just screw it in. The plumbing, the plumbing comes up here and through the wall. So I have to get rid of the stairs, which is easy. The only problem with the stairs is it's very heavy. There's no pressure in the system, but there is gravity, so I need to whip that end off, whack on the pipe, and then we're good to go. Hmm. Huh. Interesting. There isn't one of these in it. Oh, because it's stuck in the stopper. Yeah stuck in the stopper. <laughs> 